And if you look at the photo, she's not standing chest to chest with him. No, she ain't. Welcome to today's video. My name's Indian Serena, and I just dragged myself out of a rabbit hole over my newfound obsession for Kelsey Ballerini. Not only am I a sucker for country pop, Kelsey Ballerini is one of the few artists out there that really just lays everything out on the table. And until recently, I never really paid much mind to her. I knew that she was a cover girl. I knew that she had popular songs, but it wasn't until one of these songs from her recent EP, Rolling Up the Welcome Mat, came on my Spotify shuffle because like I said, I'm a sucker for country pop. And I don't even remember what song it was, but I found myself going back to it a couple of times in the following days. Eventually I just listened to the entire EP out of curiosity. And you know an album is good if you can't relate to the subject matter in the slightest, but you find yourself belting every lyric. That's how I have felt about this EP because it's about her divorce from Morgan Evans. And I knew that going into it a little bit, but it wasn't until I went on my rabbit hole that I started to get the full picture. Lucky for me though, Kelsey and Morgan both both write a lot of their own music. So there is a lot of lyrics and music videos and short films to decipher. It's seriously my favorite guilty pleasure. It's what I live for. Aside from spending too much money on Amazon and then returning everything once I've come back to my senses. Ever since Taylor Swift started dropping Easter eggs in her music, I have been addicted. I love the subliminal messages that songwriters put into their music. So for those that wanna know the entire backstory behind Kelsey and Morgan's divorce, but don't wanna sacrifice hours of their time, I'm here for you. I didn't do this for me, I did this for you. Not really, but let's share. Kelsey and Morgan met when they were co-hosting the Australia's Country Music Channel Awards back in 2016. By the way, Morgan Evans, her ex-husband, is Australian. I don't blame her for snatching him up as soon as she could. Kelsey said in an interview that it wasn't until the after party that they actually got to talking with each other. He had approached her and asked if she wanted to take a shot with him. They ended up talking for the rest of the night and then later in the evening, like a gentleman, according to her, he asked if he could kiss her. Normally, I would say that that's a little fast, but he is Australian, so it's okay. They ended up making their red carpet debut later that same year. And they seem really happy just based on their body language alone. And it's interesting to look at old photos of them from back in 2016 to more recent photos. You can really see the shift in their body language because in the beginning, when Kelsey would pose with him for pictures, she would stand like this with her back towards the camera and them like really chest to chest, you know what I mean? Which makes sense because when you're really in love with someone, you just wanna like live in their skin. You just wanna like be underneath their skin. Maybe that's just me. And as the years went on, you can really see her body language shift from standing chest to chest with him to standing further and further separated from him. Maybe I'm looking into it. Maybe I'm right. They got engaged shortly after that and announced it on Instagram. They got engaged, I think nine months after they met. And I do wanna note that throughout all of my research, every article, every outlet took note that they always shared sweet Instagram posts about each other. Sometimes it was for milestones, sometimes most of the time actually it was completely at random. And it really got me thinking because Kelsey and Morgan were in couples therapy for the majority of their relationship. And it seems as though they both really made a point to give public admiration for each other, despite the turmoil that was happening behind the scenes. I have my theories on why this is, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Just under a year later, they got married on December 2nd, 2017 in Cabo San Lucas. They had shots of tequila at the ceremony as a nod to the night that they first met. They had handwritten vows. They were on the beach in the sand. It was a beautiful wedding. People Magazine had exclusive photos of the event and wrote an article about the wedding itself. I'll leave the link in the description box below if you guys wanna read it. In 2018, their first year of marriage, everything seemed pretty happy. She went on record saying that the first year was pretty happy for the two of them. They really supported each other and their careers. You know, like that lovey-dovey first year of marriage honeymoon phase. But 2019 seemed like a very different story. On track five of the EP called Blindsided, Kelsey recalls an incident in 2019. She and Morgan got into a big fight the night before this big event. She had slept on the couch the night before and then the following day at the event, she was all smiles for the cameras and so was he. It's part of the reason why I pay so close attention to their body language in these red carpet photos because it seems like so much of it was just about keeping up appearances. The big show that she's referring to in the song was the CMA Awards, which she performed on. He texted her the day of the show and just said, see you at the carpet while she was at rehearsals. They were in the thick of the fight when they actually saw each other on the red carpet later that day. Just imagine the tension between the two of them and having to put on a facade for the public because
because you don't want anybody to ask any questions. Not only are they unhappy in their marriage, but they have to pretend like they are. It sounds awful. And if you look at the photo, she's not standing chest to chest with him. No, she ain't. Do you see what I'm talking about? The evolution that you can see in their body language as their marriage starts to deteriorate behind closed doors. She's even pointed out the bags that are underneath their eyes from not getting any sleep the night before. Like, ugh. I love this stuff. I live for this. It's just, it's so, it's like infinitely fascinating to me to hear what was happening behind the scenes looking at these pictures. Because at the time, when you're looking at these photos, you have no idea that she slept on the couch the night before. I'm so fascinated by who people are behind closed doors. Anyway, I think my brain just stopped for a second. After the pandemic in October of 2020, Kelsey went on record to say that she and Morgan had agreed with each other that they would never write music together out of respect for each other's craft. And while I'm reaching, that just seems super weird. As two people that have made it their life's work to put their feelings and their stories into song, they never wanted to write music together. Their life partner? To me, that's an indication that there was a lack of intimacy and honesty in the relationship. Again, I know I'm reaching here. Ryan Hurd and Maren Morris write music together. And I know that every relationship is different, but that's a red flag to me. Later that same year, they moved into their first real home together. I think they lived in some kind of apartment beforehand. He moved in with her, by the way. And Kelsey talked about the entire experience in track three of the EP called Penthouse. She talked about how she thought the purchase of the home would be the solution to all of their problems. She thought that it would make her happier in her marriage with him, but it didn't. She even calls him out for taking half the house in the divorce, and that is spicy. You got some ice cube chapstick? My lips are hot. Do right we now. have ice? They both signed a prenup in the beginning of their marriage, but I guess her lawyers told her during the divorce proceedings that she either gave him half the house that they had or pay him alimony. She said she just wanted to wipe her hands of the relationship and be done with it, so she just gave him half the house. But she has made it a point to mention it in interviews and in her music. At the end of the song, she said that she ended up buying a home that they looked at together when they were home shopping that he said he didn't think was right for them, but she had always wanted. And the home that she's referring to is a $2.5 million home in Nashville that she actually bought from fellow country queen, Casey Musgraves. Fun fact. 2021 seemed like an even harder year for their marriage. Kelsey had hosted the CMT Awards and Morgan was notably absent from the event. And she had talked about it on a Call Her Daddy podcast episode a few months ago. If you haven't heard the podcast, I'll link that down below too. She spills every last drop of tea. She said that she told him not to go because she was working and didn't wanna to have to deal with keeping up the charade of being in a happy marriage with him and not have to worry about keeping him happy or making it look like they were happy, which I understand. Stand. At that time, they were in and out of separation. Later that same year, Kelsey did an interview with People Magazine. They gotta pay her really well. It seems like they always get the exclusive stories. And she said that she never really visualized marriage for herself after she had witnessed the very messy divorce between both of her parents when she was younger. And I get it, I've been there. Kelsey, are we trauma bonding? And she talked about how she realized that marriage wasn't just this fairy tale and it was more so work than anything else. And to an extent, I do agree. I think they both tried really hard to keep up the appearance of having this fairy tale relationship, this fairy tale marriage, when it was never like that. When in all reality, they were going to couples counseling and she was sleeping on the couch. And then nine months later, Kelsey filed for a divorce. And because divorce proceedings are public record, she felt the need to release a statement right after she filed because she wanted to be the one to break the story before any news outlet could. I'm surprised she didn't give the exclusive rights to People Magazine, but they both ended up releasing statements actually. And then things get messy. A month after the filing, Morgan Evans performed a new single called Over For You at the CMC Rocks QLD Festival and released a studio version of the song a month later. And it illustrates his confusion on how and when Kelsey decided that she no longer wanted to be married to him. With this song, he begins his narrative that he was completely blindsided by the filing and had no idea that they were on the brink of divorce. Like he had no idea where they went wrong. In the chorus of the song, he says that he would have taken a flight in the night to be a shoulder for her. And that directly contradicts Kelsey's song, Mountain With A View, that she wrote in response when she says that he never took that last flight, presumably his last chance before she had decided that it was over. There are a few times in the EP that depicts a very lonely and separated relationship between the two of them, at least from Kelsey's perspective. It seemed as though they never really spent much time together due to conflicting work schedules and what sounds like just lack of priority. 
in the short film that she made for the EP, the opening scene is of her on the phone with him. And she thought that he was on a flight back home to see her and he tells her that he never got on the flight. So I imagine that that was a pretty big issue for the two of them. But his version of the story is that he would have flown anywhere for her. So what was it? Well, what's the reason? He released his own short film last month that was based around his performance at CMC Rocks. It was basically like a short concert film. It's titled Over For You, that single that was about his divorce with Kelsey. But the short film, it seemed, was to document like what he was doing and thinking and feeling at the time. It's a five episode series and I tried to watch the whole thing. I had to stop midway through episode three because it's just so boring. I ended up powering through and watching the entire thing because I wanted to get the full picture of what he was trying to give the public. It did give me some insight on his home life with his family because their performance at CMC Rocks was in Australia, where he's from, where his family lives. And his relationship with his family was something that Kelsey said was really attractive to her in the very beginning. And throughout Kelsey and Morgan's marriage, he was always very concerned with having a family and them having babies together. And they never seemed to be on the same page about that. I think that was the biggest issue between them was that he wanted to have a family and she wasn't even sure if she wanted to have kids, let alone with him. He made a comment in the the short film about how many kids his brother has. And Kelsey said in an interview that Morgan would often comment about not wanting to be an old dad. He wanted to have kids as soon as possible. And maybe I'm psychoanalyzing here, but I imagine Morgan sitting down, hanging out with his family, seeing his brother not have one kid, but three, while he's inching toward 40 with no baby in sight. Ultimately, I think that Kelsey and Morgan are fundamentally different in the sense that they are seeking completely different things out of of love. Morgan seems to like the safety net version of love. He even said that the worst part of this divorce was going home to no one. He just seems to be the type to want to check off the boxes of finding a wife and having a baby while also spending a lot of time on the road. But if you won't even sacrifice some time to just spend quality time with your wife, who's to say that you'd carve out time for your kids if you had them? And with Kelsey, I think that she's just seeking a far more complex version of love. I think Kelsey just really appreciates the complexities of relationships. I think love runs much deeper for her than a checkbox. And I think that's why their marriage fell so flat and was so unfulfilling for her, but was that checked box for him. Since the divorce, he's tweeted a couple of times about how he thought he knew Kelsey. She said the same thing about him on the Call Her Daddy podcast. And if you think about it, if they both really feel this way, they must have not known each other all that well at all. It seems to me like they never even really knew each other. Kelsey says that she's evolved as a person since she met him. She said that in the beginning, she really loved him. And in the end, she really loved herself. And I felt that. Because what's more painful, being physically alone and feeling lonely or being in a relationship with someone and feeling lonely? Really think about that question and think about what that looks like for an intimate relationship. Kelsey said on the Call Her Daddy episode that she and Morgan had a very healthy, very open conversation immediately after she filed for divorce. I think she said that it actually made her hopeful for what their relationship was gonna look like in the future. But as the divorce proceedings continued and they both kept giving out their version of the story to the public, it seemed like their respect for each other just started to crumble and they haven't spoken to each other once since that last conversation after she filed. And I think that just goes to show just how separated their lives were when the only commonality between the two of them was marriage. And once that marriage is removed from the equation, there's just nothing left. They just no longer existed on the same playing field. So they had no reason to speak with each other anymore. Regardless with every relationship, everyone is gonna have their own version of the story. There's your version, their version, and the truth. We'll never really know the truth of what happened behind closed doors because we'll only ever have their individual narratives. But it makes for a good rabbit hole, I tell you what. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like going down rabbit holes, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know when I've just climbed out of one. And please like this video and comment down below whose side you're taking on this one. Thank you guys again and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.